In this presentation, we're going to talk about how to come up with ideas, how to come up with concepts. The founder of Atari says, everyone who's ever taken a shower has an idea. It's the person who gets out of the shower, dries off, and does something about it who makes a difference. This is an actual product called Aqua Notes, so you can actually take notes in the shower. So brainstorming is a key to developing the concept. We're going to talk about both verbal and visual brainstorming. According to Jim Krause, the author of Design Basics Index, it's safe to say that most designers, most of the time, spend the early stages of a project exploring a wide range of ideas and approaches. This phase of a project should not be ignored or abbreviated. It's where most of the conceptual and visual components of the work ahead are hatched. So rules for brainstorming, don't stop too soon. Sometimes you'll get in a group and you're all talking and brainstorming and coming up with ideas and then it gets quiet. And then if you let it be quiet and keep going, that's sometimes where the real gems are. There are no bad ideas and keep going, keep generating ideas. The larger pile of ideas you have at the end, the more you can kind of sort through and come up with a good one. When brainstorming, think quantity now, quality later. Repeat this to yourself 10 times before you begin cranking out ideas. Quantity now, quality later. You want a quantity of ideas, you want a whole ton of ideas, and then you can pick through and find some good ones. Some ways to kind of play with words when you're doing verbal brainstorming. Look for synonyms, antonyms, rhyming words, and analogies. So we'll talk about those here in a second. Synonyms, first of all, are words having the same or nearly the same meaning as another or other words in a language. So happy, joyful, elated are all synonyms for each other. Or runway models. Or melancholy. Or nonstick spray. Think of synonyms, if you were needing to come up with a new name for a space-aged kid's cereal, what might you think of? Maybe Orbit Crunch? Synonyms can also be used in naming colors, colors of a product. So here's a pear shirt. Here's a light stem green sweater. Here's a dark forest green polo shirt. Analogies are another way to play with words. Similarity in some respects between things that are otherwise dissimilar. So the heart is like a pump. Advertisers use analogies a lot because their, their product may be actually kind of boring, but they're going to sell you a lifestyle. They're going to sell you how you feel when you use the product. They, they are going to add an emotional meaning to it. So here's a drink that looks ice cold, very refreshing. They're selling you the feeling of, of coolness. This is an ad for a social anxiety medication. So in the first part of the ad, she is dressed in gray, her hair is back, she, her hands are together, her feet are together, she's pulled in body language wise. Okay. But once she takes the medicine, her hair is down, she's smiling, she's wearing that apple green shirt. So they're selling this feeling of being um, in charge and happy. This is an ad for a medicine that controls acid in your stomach. Yes. But the images and the idea and the whole feeling that they're selling you is power and control. The purple is such a powerful color. So it's purple there, his tie is purple. He's strong, he's smiling, he's happy. Just because the acid in his stomach is under control. 
This is another ad that's for a um, like MRI machines and other diagnostic equipment, electron microscopes, um, which is kind of would be boring to look at. But happy older people in their golden years jumping on the bed is like this is how exciting this technology is. So they're selling you that feeling of how happy this technology can be. This is a Chevy truck. We're front and center. We're looking up at it. It's powerful. It, there's red, white, and blue throughout. There's silos in the background. So you're, you're just getting a whole feeling of, of strength and power if you have a Chevy truck. And if you want something awesome and exciting and pure adrenaline, this is a great ad. It's rich, it's beautiful, it is um, high end. The colors are, are showing you that it's kind of a high end thing. They're selling you this feeling of just being beautiful and exotic and rich. So once again, some rules for brainstorming. Be sure to generate lots of possibilities. As I mentioned before, the more things you come up with, the better you can work with. Defer judgment at all costs. Don't be afraid to be wild and crazy. Piggyback on other people's ideas. Have a positive, constructive attitude. Avoid breaking the flow. Promise that you'll come together in the end and be sure to keep it light. Brainstorming is not always pretty. It's not called storming for nothing. Now, if you're all by yourself and want to brainstorm and come up with ideas, there's something called mind mapping and other visual techniques for brainstorming and coming up with ideas. So mind mapping is a, is a way for you to sort of come up with ideas on your own. You're drawing with paper, pencil, colored pencils, um, and notice it's sort of the same rules. You kind of keep going. You add piggyback off of other ideas. Mind apps should always have little doodles in them because it helps you access your creative brain. So some of the rules for mind mapping. Start at the center of the page. Don't be serious. Free associate. Think as fast as you can. There are no boundaries. Don't judge as you're going. Keep on going. Keep set a timer or something. Just keep on keep on drawing. And add relationships and connections. Bring some more branches off of those little branches because there's that more ideas that piggyback on other ideas. Start at the center. Use at least three colors. Use images, symbols, codes, dimensions. Highlight keywords and don't judge. Here's a mind map by Tony Buzan. Again, kind of starting with a little picture in the middle and then allowing branches to come off of branches. Here's another one of how actually a mind map about how to use mind maps. Notice that there's little pictures and little images around. And another one, how to honor Joe. Lots of little pictures, lots of little branches coming off of the branches. Now another way to visually develop concepts is a mood board. So a mood board is a type of poster design that may consist of images, text, and samples of objects and a composition of the choice of the mood board creator. Designers use mood boards to communicate with other members of the team. But I think the main purpose of the mood board is to sort of set the tone of the, of the project that you're working on. If you're doing a website, if you're doing a social media campaign, how do you want it to feel? Remember the guy with the purple pill and the purple powerful colors? Is that what you want to communicate? Do you want to communicate more earth tones, muted tones? So here's a mood board of travels and trips, vacations. So the whole feeling 
there's blues, there's browns. So it's travel, it's destinations, it is exploring. Mood boards are used in interior design a lot. So there's maybe fabric swatches and little elements, and maybe you want um, the cupcakes, you want some pink. So it's a great thing to kind of show a client, this is what I want my film to be. Or if you're doing a website, how do you want your website to feel? If you are maybe doing recipes on your website, you don't need that big purple powerful thing. Or you don't want everything dirt colored. You want happy bright colors. So mood board is a great way of steering that. Here's one for some a fashion mood board. This also kind of lets you explore your target market some by putting images of what they like. What is your target market thinking like? The next part of visual brainstorming we're going to talk about is thumbnails. And these are small, quick, unrefined drawings of your ideas. They're sketched out by hand. Um, again, you can generate a lot of concepts. And again, you want to generate a lot of thumbnails so you can pick through them and pick out some good ideas out of them. So a lot of times they can just help you quickly come up with ideas. The computer can slow you down a little bit when you're in that theta state and generating a ton of ideas. Um, if you're working with a client, you can work directly with your client making some sketches. So I'll show you some examples here in a second. And it also lets you create a lot of visual ideas quickly. So there's an example, just kind of quick drawings generating. You often don't show these to people. They're kind of in the behind the scenes. You can do them on some cocktail napkins. So you can bring ideas from your head to paper by making quick sketches or doodles, your thumbnail sketches. Don't worry about neatness or finesse. Quantity now, quality later. The more thumbnails you record, the more material you'll have to sift through later on. Whenever possible, use large sheets of paper when brainstorming. Big paper invites excess, encourages abandon. Fill a page, fill several. Quantity now, quality later. And don't forget to play. Here's some thumbnails, sketches of a business card. So you could think if you're working with a client or even if you're designing your own business card, you can really kind of do some thinking. Do I want it portrait? Do I want it landscape? Landscape means it's on its side. Portrait means it's up and down. So where do I want the picture to be? Where do I want the title to be? So this is very simple drawing that anybody can do, but you get a lot of information and ideas. And sometimes when you, when you sit here and work with it, oh, maybe I really want to try it like this. These are thumbnails of a web page. So it's the same thing, you get some really quick ideas right away. Another one of a website. This is um, a tad more of a storyboard because you're building a story, but it's another kind of a way to do thumbnails, putting a little story together. And maybe some quick thumbnails for a greeting card. So this is an example of some quick thumbnails. Once you have some thumbnails, you could pick one or two and you make a rough. So rough, you've taken your thumbnail, you make it a little larger, you make it to scale, you um, clean it up a little bit. And so you sort of get an idea of what you want. And then you bring this to the computer and you create what's called a comp or a comprehensive. So you've put the whole design together. Um, it's getting closer to a finished state. It needs to be checked off by the client and the printer and things like that, but make sure everything's all set and put together. But that's what's called the comp or the comprehensive. So here's our logo. So you can see that there's a lot of throughout the process, you might want to play, play with thumbnails, play with brainstorming, play with a mind map. Um, 
and you can really kind of come up with some great ideas that way.